Greetings, investors. It is I, Eli Musk. I've been reached out to by a company by the name of Aitzer in a bid to have me review their laser engraver, the Aitzer P20. I am clearly very qualified to do this, so thank you very much, Aitzer, for making the correct choice in sponsoring this video. Let's get to it. So here's the packaging it came in, nothing fancy, so you're already saving some money there. But as you can see, everything is still nice and snug in its own little slots in this nice dense foam. So it's about as protective as you can ask for without having to spend any extra money on pretty packaging. So it's a W for me. I'll speed this up for you. Alrighty, here it is all laid out. I won't lie, a little daunting, but I got the IKEA instructions here, so. I won't torture you guys putting this together on camera, but I'll let you know about how long it takes me to do it. I will say, for whatever it's worth, at first glance, everything does look very high quality. Everything's very rigid steel. I think it's steel. No, aluminum, I guess. Whatever it is, even the thin parts, very rigid, really no flex to it. I'm definitely stalling. Let me put this thing together. See you in a second. <laughs> Great news for me. This thing was way easier to put together than I thought it was gonna be. They literally have numbered baggies for each individual step of the instructions. Pretty much, if you could do one of these things, you could put together this thing, which, thank God, I'm not good at this stuff. I actually, before now, have never touched a laser engraver. It's really just like four or five screws in each corner, a few screws holding the feet on, four long screws holding the crossbar onto these brackets that are attached to the belts. And then if you would come over here, the laser itself slots right into this little bracket and there's a little knob on the other side to keep it in place. This is how you raise and lower the laser to adjust for the thickness of your material. There's three little spots where you gotta plug the wires in where the booklet tells you to. You plug this hose in, this comes from the air assist here. The laser itself plugs into your computer with a USB and you're pretty much ready to burn. You just need some laser engraver software. So the program I'm using here is called Lightburn. I, I won't lie, I'm still on the free trial, but it's like 120 bucks and it's pretty much the best software you can get for this kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll definitely be buying it once my uh, trial runs out. So I was able to make this cut map out of this JPEG here that I've been sitting on forever. This is some reverse draw crossbow cams. And I can tell that this is the perfect application for this machine because this is exactly the kind of stuff I don't like cutting out by hand. Alrighty, I got a piece of quarter inch plywood in there. As you saw when I opened up the box, it comes with this little piece of, I don't know, stainless steel or something. They put it in there so you got something to cut on, but it gets kind of mucky after not that long, especially if you're cutting plywood, the glue kind of melts and sticks to it. So I went ahead and I got this honeycomb cutting surface. I basically see everybody with a laser engraver using one of these things and it's definitely worth it. And it wasn't too bad, it was like 40 bucks. So, of course, you turn on the machine and it will go home, which, must be nice. And here's something I always wondered. If your design that you're about to cut out is like almost the same size as your plywood, how do you know your laser is not going to go over and like cut over the edge? Well, I got this little button here that says frame and when you press it, the laser goes over to the material and does a lap around your whole entire design so you can see if it goes over in any spots. Doesn't look like it did that time. Okay, we're gonna turn on the air assist, which best way I could describe this thing is it's basically a forge blower. It bumps up the cutting power of your laser by blowing air onto the ember that the laser is creating. It also clears away debris, so your laser is hitting new material every time it passes, and it prevents browning around your cut. So air assist, very epic. Let me get you guys situated. Here we go. While the robot slaves away, allow me to hit you with some specs if you don't mind. The full engraving area is 430 by 430 millimeters, which in American is about 16 square cheeseburgers or 17 by 17 inches. The machine runs on 120 volts and it's got a laser output of 20 to 24 watts, and this is a diode laser, not a CO2 laser. The laser's spot diameter is 0 0.08 millimeters by 0 0.06 millimeters, so about the size of a mark from a pencil, and it's got an accuracy of 0 0.01, so this is a very, very precise machine. The focal length on the laser is 40 millimeters and it's got a wavelength of plus or minus 455 nanometers so <laughs> i almost don't know what any of that means big shout out to build that build and chris powell for putting those numbers together i don't know where i'd be without you So clearly these pieces could use another pass or two. If this kind of happens to you where it doesn't cut all the way through and the leftover is just a little bit too thick for you to be able to push the piece out without damaging it, just take a little utility knife to it. Just uh, score the spot a few times, it'll pop right out. Now all these pieces were done in 15 minutes. For me, this is very impressive. Like I said, I've never really used laser engravers or really any form of automated cutting tool. I know for a fact there's gotta be some scroll saw wizards out there that could have got this done in, you know, under an hour. 
Nami. Especially those little inside cuts. Just being able to snap my fingers and have these pieces just pop out 15 minutes later, it's like, it's like a superpower. Which kind of leads me to an important point. I've always been pretty apprehensive of things like laser engravers or 3D printers or CNC machines. I feel like I'm nervous to integrate anything that I feel like would make me less of a builder. But the way that I've kind of been thinking about the laser engravers, it's almost like having an assistant. Where it's like, I know for a fact I could cut these pieces out on a scroll saw. There's not really a question about that. It would just take way more time than I really want to spend on that. So instead, I give it to my assistant. Hey, eight, sir, would you mind uh, cutting out these little pieces? Got it, boss. I'll be done in 15 minutes. That's pretty cool. If I were to do these pieces by hand and like actually try to do a good job on them, that could very well be the only thing I do that day. The magical ability to get the pieces in 15 minutes and then be able to immediately start on whatever I was going to do to it like the next day, just a huge boost to productivity. So I can promise you right now, this is not going to become a laser engraver, 3D printer, CNC machine channel. I like building. I genuinely love of building. I like doing stuff with my hands. So we all need a little help sometimes, that's for sure. So for the short time I've had this laser engraver, I've only used it for cutting, but word on the street is you can use these things for engraving too, which is a pretty good thing to know. And for whatever reason, what immediately came to mind for me was scribing. Like marking out a line for a cut, because the day might come where I'm not looking to make a little toy crossbow with some plywood cams. Maybe I want to make something a little beefier and I got to bump up the building materials. So I took this aluminum sheet and on this side, you can see I put some spray paint. On this side, I put some blue dicum. I ran it through the engraver and the spray paint side came out okay you can you can see it but man am i impressed by that scribe and the dicum i didn't really know what i was expecting i had no expectations really to be honest but that scribe came out so nice as far as like flat materials go i think i can pretty safely say that this is going to be my go-to method for scribing and then guys you knew i had to do it i put the logo in there i programmed it to engrave the logo and then once the logo is finished then to actually go around and cut the logo out now this is the kind of stuff i could never do by hand slash would never want to i'll happily leave that one to the robots no thanks and in case you thought it was a little sus how many passes it took to cut the cams out, I just changed the settings on the thing, slowed it down a little bit, and it easily cuts through the quarter inch plywood in a single pass. Then I wanted to try a little experiment. I got a little spray paint on there, wiped it off. It's, it's an interesting look, I guess. Where I wiped it off, the spray paint is kind of like a wood stain. It was kind of cool, I guess. I don't know what I would do with this kind of thing. I might be able to cut another one that has like a ring up here and it could hang in your rear view mirror or something. I don't know. As a little side note, I'm not going to get into it here. I'm not experienced enough with these things, but I have seen some people have some pretty interesting results with etching photographs, and I saw somebody doing color etching too, which is crazy to me. I would assume it has something to do with like that gradient oxidizing thing where if you heat up a piece of steel, it'll like change colors. It sounds really cool, but that is way above my pay grade, not going to lie. Well, guys, I think that's about all I got for this thing. Thank you all very much. Ooh. I almost forgot literally the whole reason I got this Bruh. thing. My microphone broke. This thing was not cheap, and I can't find these things anywhere. I think they might be discontinued. Customer services and calling back. I, I hate to do it, but I think I might have to pirate this microphone. Test, test. Oh, that is so much better. Wow. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Biggest, fattest thank you in the universe ever to 8 sir. Yes, for sponsoring the video. Yes, for giving me this awesome laser engraver. But honestly, thank you so much for your patience and waiting for me to deal with like getting hacked and stuff. Something like that is so stressful and I'm so grateful that I didn't have to deal with that on top of the stress of losing such an awesome sponsor. Seriously, if any of you guys out there have ever been in the market for a high-end laser engraver and you're maybe trying to choose between one or two of them, I could not recommend the 8 or P20 more. Great laser engraver engraver even greater people selling it it was a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to seeing all the stuff that i get to do with this thing but that is about all i got for today thank you guys very much for watching i'll talk to you later bye